Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll begin with listening our first hymn, number 51, Be Thou My Vision. service continues in the, on the inside of your white service leaflets. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. grace and peace be with you, Amen. and keep you in the love of Christ. And we pray the first of the gathering prayers together. Father of glory, holy and eternal, Look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness and your spirit draw us to that love shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And in a moment of silence, we recollect our own faults and shortcomings of the past week and offer them before God. And 
we pray together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we stand for the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. The collect and readings for this week can be found on, the, on your pew sheets. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be like, made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom with you and the Holy Spirit be the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guest. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Who, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great, do the great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a fool, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The second reading is from the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come 
like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep at night and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live in him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Our gradual hymn is hymn number 579, Restore, O Lord. of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted him his property. To one he gave five talents, another two, and another one, each according to their ability. Then he went away. 
The one who had received five talents went off and once traded them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had received two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled his account with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the glory of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For all those who have more will be given and they will have, the abund have an abundance. But those who have nothing even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where, he will be, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Before I continue with the sermon, could I, you know, one or two of you might be wondering who we've got in front of us this morning. Well, this is Reverend Major, may I call you? Nia Williams. She's a chaplain in the army in Chester. Uh, we do welcome you, Nia. I think it is pretty well known fact that the word gospel means good news. And Christians believe that in Jesus Christ, the whole world is offered the good news of God's love for them. But then the New Testament also bears witness to the fact that not everyone receives God's love as good news. And incredibly, as it may seem, some people look at Jesus and dislike him and the God he, he represents. Some feel threatened, some feel bored, and some dislike the way he breaks their rules about God, and others simply don't recognise what's on offer. The passages in the lectionary gives us, a, to, to reflect on this Sunday before Advent, are full of foreboding and warnings. And so it's easy to reject the love of God and so therefore to reject one, one's own love. It's possible to live in such a way that we don't recognise life when it stands before us. Zephaniah describes a people characterised by the word complacent. They believed that they had a good life because it's material comforts. 
they well they well ha they were well housed and fed and they believed that they can keep God at a safe distance. After all, their wealth has enabled them to keep all other uncomfortable things at bay. So why not God too? It's not that they don't believe in God, it's just that they think they have brought his neutrality, he won't interfere in one way or the other. To them, God comes as a hostile, destructive army, taking away all their security and giving them nothing but terror. There's no good news for them because the only good news they would recognise is no news. They don't want to hear anything about God at all. Unfortunately for them, in God's world, there's no option. The slave in Matthew's parable isn't that far gone. He knows, that the master, he knows the master quite well, but he fears and dislikes him. There's nothing to tell us what led to this state of affairs between the master and the slave. Quite obviously, the master is a bit of a maverick. There's not many masters that would give their slaves quantities of money and go off on an unspecified period of time to an unknown destination, leaving no instructions. He doesn't tell the slave what they're expected to do with the, with the property, but clearly he knows them quite well, and they know him. They know that this is a test of some kind, and they approach it each in their own way. The slave, who was given just one talent, already believes that the master doesn't think much of him. There could well be a longer history behind all this than we are told, but it is obvious to him that the master doesn't trust him as much as the other two because he gives them less. And the slave is both afraid and stressful. And this resentment comes bubbling out when the master fully returns and the slave finds himself saying what he really thinks of the master. He knows he's going to get into trouble, but he's going to have his say first. The master recognises the slave's description of himself, but not what led to the result. If you're so scared of me, says the master, why didn't you try harder to please me? To this the slave has no answer. He had decided long ago that nothing he said or did would please the master and had given up on trying. To this slave, God isn't good news because he's so obsessed with his own failure. He can't recognise good news because he doesn't actually know himself at all. In order to hear good news, we have to have some idea of what constitutes good news for our situation and not be like this slave and look for the downside in everything. The Thessalonians want God's good news. The Thessalonians want God's good news, though even they are slightly apprehensive about it. The good news isn't something they take lightly. We have to be prepared for it. Live out our lives authentic in anticipation of sticking together and help each other prepare for it. So why should the good news of love, of God, be so alarming? Because perhaps few of us actually know how to be loved. We know how to be pampered or in, indulge ourselves or to whinge about being misunderstood, but to be loved with God's total consuming, transforming and utterly perspective love. Wow. Are we ready for that? 
Amen. Now we stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 5. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and for life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray. Holy God, if we are presuming on your mercy, alert us and shatter our complacency. If we are doubting your mercy, affirm us in the reality of your forgiveness. May we as a church Encourage and warn, but never condemn. Acknowledge sin, but never judge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, raise up prophets to speak out your truth and draw attention to whatever needs changing. In our world, our expectations and assumptions our management of resources and finances, our systems of government and attitudes. May all pe peoples come to recognise your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, fill our homes and places of work with so much love that tensions but, and, barriers, but ten and barriers melt away, conflicts are resolved, and troubles lightened by being lovingly shared. Open our hearts to hope again where we had given up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, may all in misery and despair turn to find you close beside them in their heartache, not condemning but loving them in their pain. May all who are locked in terror or guilt be set free, and may those whose long term ear illness weir wearies. Here we especially remember Joan Carden, Glennis Cook, Peter Wright, Emily Moore, Sally Peake Briley, Paul Wiley and Iris. And we ask that they may be strengthened to persevere, freed from resentment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, Lord of the living and the dead, we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially remembering Trevor Griffiths. And we thank you for that eternal healing, which frees us from all pain and suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the gifts and talents you have given us. Give us the courage to use them for the good of the world. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we pray the prayer of humble access together. We pray prayer one. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much just to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. 
The notices for this week can be found on your pew sheets. The Christmas bingo takes place this Wednesday here at, starting at 7 o'clock. Donations to use for prizes are gratefully received. Sponsored carols is on Saturday the 2nd of December at St Mark's at 2pm. And if you want, want your favourite hymn song, can you pick, pick your favourite carol for a £2 minimum donation and place it in one of the envelopes at the back of church? There are a few bags of bulbs left at the back of churches for sale, and Nicholas also puts together some planters which, for Christmas, which are available for £10 each. The Advent course is that we'll be here on, from the 4th of December over three weeks and led by Ian. And the Christmas fair is next Saturday from 10 a.m. till noon, and it will be held in St Mark's Parish Centre. If you're able to help out on the day, can you put your name on the list at the back of church? And we'll put setting up on fr Friday from 7 o'clock. And that's all the notice of this week, so we all please stand for the peace. Tree him is him number six hundred and four. Soldiers of Christ arise.
God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and pray and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We, we take, take this bread, bread. We, we take, take this wine, <coughs> to follow Christ's example and obey his command. And we'll turn to page 8 for the Eucharistic The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. True and living God, the source of life for all creation, you have made us in your own image. Always and everywhere we give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In your love for us and in the fullness of time, you sent your Son to be the Saviour. The Word was made flesh. He lived among us and we have seen his glory. For our sins and the sins of all the world, he suffered death on the cross. You raised him to life in triumph and exalted him in glory. Through him you send your Holy Spirit upon your church and make us your people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we praise your glorious name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Almighty God, because on the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, loving God, recalling now the sacrifice of Christ your, your Son, once for all upon the cross and the triumph of his resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son, and be filled with your life and goodness. Unite us in Christ, and give us your peace, that we may do your work and be his body in the world. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us in peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for us. And 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. And we say together, Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Before we end with a blessing, uh, thank you very much to all of you this morning uh, for your warm welcome and it's been a great privilege to be here with you this morning. The Lord be with you. And God also with you. The Lord bless you and keep watch over you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look lovingly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love, now and always. Amen. I have a processional hymn. It's hymn number 188. In 188.
pensando a todos. Sí. Sí.